Short of money, equip a plastic bag, crack bottles, and sell them at Frita with three T's. Uh, is this where I'm meant to be going? What am I doing? I already don't know what I'm doing. Oh, I need to... So, where's his shortwave radio? This is car. A heap of snow melts in this wheelbarrow. The street sign reads, fuck the police. Pigs go home. The street name is ele illegible. Alright, is this his car? Oh, it's a Cupris Kinema. Before he stands a motor carriage, the bodywork is covered in blue and white livery bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion, the Cupris Kinema motor carriage. Open the door. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. The scent of leatherwork and heavy fuel oils, fuel oils washes over you. Pick up the radio, frequency tableau lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye, and then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis, a woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. I thought he was 42nd. Not 57, anyway. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. Hi, Alice. This is Officer from the 41st Precinct speaking. Nice to meet you. I'm going for that one. This is Officer Alice Dimitri. Dimitri. Let's go, Dimitri. Precinct 57. How may I assist you? A voice replies in the radio. Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. I wonder what Kim's default radio station is. Could you connect me to the 41st Precinct? I have something in me I need to report. Just a second, officer. She puts you on a hold and the static crackling softly like a bonfire. After a while, you hear an old man greet you from the radio. His rattly voice is oddly familiar. Jules Pidieu. 10-2-10-5, this is 41st, come in, over. The man uses relay code. You've got this. You're a cop and cops know relay code. 10-4, station 41. I've got urgent business, over. 10-4, message received. 10-5, relay message. What's your status, over. Just reporting in, over. 10-18, state your message, sir. I would really like to report my badge missing. My badge, I can't find it anywhere. Basically, it's gone. Maybe I should have looked for it before I reported it. Oh, oh well. 10-4, message received. This is a very serious situation. I need to 10-22 the captain. Over. Jean Vickemar. Vickemar? Vickemar. Is it him? A dry voice asks in the background. What does he want? Says he lost his badge and needs to report it. He what? He lost his badge? Hey, who's this? This is communications officer Jules Pidio, sir. Over. No, the other one. You mean your partner? Over. What is he saying? He's asking who you are. I'm his goddamn partner. It's your partner, satellite officer Vikamare, sir. Over. Vikamar. Vikamar? Did he lose his memory along with his fucking badge? The man in the background sounds like he's looting his patience. Chester McLean. Who lost his badge? Dick fucking Mullen. Who do you think? Ah. It's Officer Dick he tries to speak through laughter. Mullen from the bestseller Dick Mullen and the Lost Identity. Ah. Dick Mullen is not your name. It's the name of a fictional detective who would not lose his badge. Defend yourself immediately. They're laughing at you. Haha, -ha, officer has lost his badge. Haha. -ha. Like I'm the first cop to ever misplace his badge. He says this has probably happened to other policemen before him and laughs sarcastically. Oh, God damn it! Is he fucking kidding? The whole station's going to be dicked for this. Satellite officer Vikmar is wondering if you might be joking and adds that this tarnishes the reputation of the entire station. Over. Mullen Dictus. Come on, operator. Tell them to stop. This is serious. He's asking you to stop, says this is serious. Of course it's serious. He lost his fucking badge. The load officer Vic Mares concurs. Losing your badge is serious. Over. Can't we just move on? I want to get it reported and be done with it. Task completed. Gained experience. Track down your badge. 10-4. I hear you, officer. I'm just going to make a note here that you're in pursuit of your misplaced badge. Over. Fuck me, Mac. Come here. You've got to hear this. Dick Mullen lost his badge. Mac Torson. What's going on? Super cop here lost his badge. He lost his what now? His badge. He lost his goddamn fucking badge. Could you all please just stop saying lost his badge for a moment? He asks you to please stop saying he lost his badge. Why? Did he find it? The room at the other end of the line erupts in volcanic laughter. Sergeant Torson was wondering if you found your badge yet. Over. Um, you don't have a comeback, sorry. Oh, failure, no. It's hard to think like this. Say nothing. He's not replying. Looks like he is still looking for it. You can hear laughter in the background. 10-9, come again. I didn't get that over. The animated conversation in the back is making it difficult for him to hear you. <laughs> New heights even for Captain Sober. Ask him, the speaker gasps her air. Ask him if he lost his gun too. The room roars, roars with laughter. Sergeant Torson wants to know if you lost your gun too. Over. 
Check your pockets. Check your... Holy fuck, you don't know where it is, do you? Oh god, it's not here. Okay, it's gone. Your gun is most definitely gone. Ten nine, 9 come in, officer. Did you get my question? We were wondering about your gun. Over. 72%. Convince them you didn't lose your gun. I guess we'll do that. Boom. Lying over the phone, it's easy. Just say it like it's the truth, and then it becomes it. No, of course I didn't lose my gun. Oh, I didn't lose my gun, really. He says he didn't. Thank God for that. That would have been a nightmare. I don't even want to imagine the poor prick has to relate that kind of news to the captain. Losing his badge is bad enough. Tell him to find it and fast. We can't have some gang banner bang out running around with it. New task, track down your gun. Well, we're all glad to hear you've not lost your gun, officer. Do you need further assistance? Over. Listen, I've actually lost my gun too. I'm going to just fess up. Yay, he gave me experience. 10-4, I know. I already wrote it in a report, but he hesitates. It will stay on my desk for a few days. Over. Okay, I am in dire need of financial assistance. 10-4, I hear you. I don't have the authority to grant your request, but what does he want now? He's asking for money. Is he fucking kidding? I don't think he is. Don't give that asshole anything. He's just going to drink it all. Fair enough. That is fair enough. All right, the operator turns back to you. That's a negative on the additional funds, sir. Over. It's paramount to the investigation that you grant me more money. He says it's important to the case. He isn't getting a red cent. You can tell him that. Request denied, sir. Over. Okay, I heard you no funds. This might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Uh, okay, 10-4, sir, I hear you. Relay your question over. Wait, before you say anything stupid, think of it through. I need information, not fear. What? Yeah? Be smart about this. Ask if he's there alone. 10 four, sir, I'm not hearing your question. The radio operator inquires again. Hold on, are you alone in the room? I need some confidential information about myself. That's a negative, sir. I got a 10-12 visitor's present here. Over. I wanted to know if you got my badge's description right in your report. Could you read it to me? Name, rank, date of birth. What? What is it? He's still on the line? He wants to verify the information on his badge. But of course, it says Dick Mullen, High General of the Revacolian Cavalry Force. Tell him to stop wasting time. What do you need, sir? Over. Uh, I feel like the rhetoric told me I shouldn't do this if there was someone else there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk it. I'm not gonna risk it. All right, we're done. Roger that, 1010, over and out. The static ends with a loud click, then everything is silent in the cabin. Uh, pick up the radio again. No, I wanna, oh yeah, okay. Alice, please connect to, I need you to connect me to a civilian, a Sylvie, she may have reported a murder. Of course, what's her number, officer? Kim, didn't Gar to give you Sylvie's number? Yes, hold on, the lieutenant takes a look at his notes. Her number is 005, 1944, 298. Received, hold on, officer. Blank, uh, more blank. Blank. Start slapping a marching rhythm on your thighs. Give it a minute. She might be busy at the moment. It takes a bit to get to the phone. Blank. 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 Officer, she finally returns. I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Hello, yes. A female voice greets you through static. It sounds like she's a million miles away from here. Sylvie, I believe we've met before. This is me, a detective from the Whirling in Rags. Oh, right. She recognized your voice almost immediately. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? You quit your job at the Whirling Y. You mean, why did I leave the bar? You can hear her tense up on the other side. Honestly, I'm I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? Okay, did you leave because of Garter? What? She stops abruptly. No, why would you even think that? Sylvie, don't be afraid of that pig. You just have to stand up for yourself. Please don't bring Garter into this. It's none of your business. All right. God, why can't you just mind your own business? She mutters. Oh, fair enough. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're messing everything up again. Was it you who called the police? No, not me. Do you know who made that call? No, sorry, I don't. She clears her throat. Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money and to have the cables put in again. They use the union's phone or the one on the coast. So the union has a phone and there's one further down the coast. Got it. There's two phones in the city? It was someone else. The lieutenant makes a note. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. But why didn't you call? What? Of course it bothered me, but I thought the union already knew about the corpse. I meant us, you should have called the police. No one calls the police. You can hear her adjust the receiver in her hand. The union would get angry. What do you mean by that? You know, she seems to be looking for words. What the union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. Wait, Kim, lower your microphone. Is she speaking truth? The union is the law around here? Legally, no. In reality, yes. He looks around. Martinez is de facto policed by the dock workers union. Uh... Looks like there's a limit to my authority then. Mm-hmm. So oh, I see. There's something else you can tell me about. I don't know what to tell you, officer. I didn't call you because I didn't want to get in trouble with the others, with the union. I'm sorry about that. Okay, next question. Have you seen my badge? Yes, I know who you are. You're a police officer. The law. 
This exact conversation has happened before. Establishing authority before this young girl seems to have been important to you in the past. Don't go there again. My badge is missing. Have you seen it anywhere? Oh, no, I haven't. Sorry. Real policemen have uniforms too, by the way. Where's yours? Kim doesn't have a uniform and he seems real to me. He's in plain clothes voluntarily. It's different from not knowing where your uniform is. Have you seen my gun? Please no, not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. She sounds beyond exacerbated. I showed you my gun? When did it happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating and... She stops hesitantly, not sure if she should continue. And what? What did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It got pretty graphic. Oh, those again? I have been trying to wean you off them. <laughs> Off of what? You know, when you put when you put your gun, your actual gun on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out? Off of that. People don't like that. Hmm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, My brains are all over the walls, painting them red. I won't be seeing it because these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. Yes, but what happened to my gun? I'm just going to move on. No idea. All I know is, next you were waving around money instead, saying things like, Big bucks cannot lie, and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like you pawned it. But believe me, I did not ask, she sighs. Uh, have you seen my policeman uniform? Uniform? I never saw you in any uniform. You had your things on. The disco things. I think I've got everything I need. I do hope so. Please don't call me again. Bye. She's ready to hang up. Uh, red check. Empathy one. Why well, don't I have any empathy? Because I'm a thinker. Let's try it. Boo. No, she doesn't have a problem with you. It must be someone else she's angry about. Some other guy like Gate. Okay, but I'm a guy. Sure, it isn't about me. Trust me, you wouldn't want to be the guy here. You know how it is. Yak, yak, nag, nag. Okay. No, you're the guy. You're Lieutenant Love, matchmaker extraordinaire. Help the poor girl out, lest she turns into a spinster. I'm happy to help, but maybe I could do so without all this internalized misogyny. That'd be the right choice there. What misogyny? I'm just telling you the way things are. Can't a man be honest in his own head anymore? You have to act, Lieutenant Love. You have to calm that hysteric down. Tell it you've got everything under control. Then go and have a little boy's talk with Gata himself. Think you can do that, Lieutenant Love? Why is my empathy a complete shitbag? Come to the microphone. Are you still there, kiddo? Listen, I've got everything under control. Daddy is going to take you on his lap, little darling. Oh my god. Please no, I don't want to say any of those things. Refuse the love quest, although it's wonderful. Please no, I don't want to do any of those things. You're just a gimp. What do you want to be more empathetic? Do you want to be more empathetic? Call was terminated by the other party. Anything else on this? So, <laughs> definitely don't fail empathy roles.